Hi everyone, welcome to Nana's Stitching Lounge. I am Rosie and I am the host of Nana's Stitching Lounge. I, uh, it's been a while since I've broadcast, so to my returning uh, viewers and friends, welcome back. And to my new friends, if you're stopping by here, um, just to let you know that this is a uh, podcast on knitting, crocheting, and uh, all kinds of yarny uh, goodness. So today is May the 20th, and I think I last broadcast in March, so I have a lot of things to show you guys. Um, a lot of finished objects and um, a lot of things that I'm wanting to start. Not, not too many whips because I don't like having too many whips. I am very monogamous that way. But um, yeah, so today, May the 20th, 2021, and I live in Toronto. Well, actually I used to live in Toronto, Ontario. Now I live in Hamilton, Ontario, which is just around the lake, closer to Niagara Falls now. And it is really hot here the last three days. So it went from 10 Celsius to now 28 Celsius, which is hot. <laughs> 70 from 60 to like 80 anyway very weird we go from winter to full full-fledged summer in this these parts but i am not complaining i never complain of the heat so uh that is not a problem for me so let us start um what have i been doing so i have been working here at home still um, this is actually where we've been, I've been working. You can maybe tell us if you've been back, like we painted in these rooms, all, everything's been painted. No, I don't have any golden yellow anymore in the house. Um, if we, so we've been renovating. So if you've been watching, uh, I do have a playlist on, uh, renovating Nona Stitching Lounge. Um, my husband, set, uh, Sal, no, no, and I uh, moved into this place uh, in December, and uh, since February we've been uh, knocking down walls and renovating, and now we're in the decorating part. And so um, I will probably be putting a before and after last video on my uh, playlist for Nana Stitching Lounge renovation. If you want to go take a look, um, and it's it's been uh, 16 weeks. So it's been, it's not bad considering what we've done to the house. It isn't actually a bad uh, time frame, but it's just, we've been living in the basement and a lot of dust and uh, haven't really cleaned very well all the dust yet because they haven't quite finished and they're still going to be doing some sanding in the hallway. But anyway, it just, it's, it's been fun. A lot of fun um, picking out colors, picking out furniture. Uh, it's, I've been watching, so I've been watching a lot of designer uh, YouTube channels <laughs> and um, and I try to get in a few knitting and crocheting podcasts in there uh, when I can. Um, and uh, you know what they say, if you've, if you've um, done or you've experienced 10,000 hours of something, you are now an expert. So now I'm an expert designer, or <laughs> so I like to think anyway. So, um, let's start with some of the crocheting and knitting. So what am I wearing? So some of you may um, have seen this before. Um, this is a crocheted summer sweater. It is done with a knit crate yarn. And of course I didn't look it up. This was from two years ago, I think, the knit crate yarn. Um, the pattern is called, and I'll find it for you because I can't remember. Oh, the Ilara, uh, Ilara pullover. So this is this is it. Um, I love this. I got to make another one, so I'll just stand up. I didn't make it short like um, it it is in the picture. I don't like um, you know to, to show my belly button, obviously. But um, so this is the Alara pullover, and I really like it. So I did it with a knit crate Vitalan, I think it's um. It's a worsted weight, but it turned out beautiful. And I just, you, everybody knows, I think that if you um, come to my channel that I love purple and I also love the round yolks. And you will see uh, a few more of these type of patterns. So that is what I'm wearing. 
Um, I do have a couple of, let's, let's start with a whip and not finished project. So my whip that I'm working on, you guys will laugh because I have made this sweater, I don't know how many times in very different forms. Um, and this is a knitted pattern. So I am doing the petite knit Sunday tea. And I have done, I've done this one. I have done um, the open one a few times. I've done two of the open ones for the kids. And um, my granddaughter saw me knitting um, with this color. Now this is a knit crate uh, called Linen Jewel. It's a Vidalana knit by Knit Crate. And it is 50% uh, superwash merino. 30% linen and 20% silk. Now it is a fingering weight yarn. Um, and I'm not crazy about crocheting with fingering weight. So I was looking for a knitting pattern and I tried, I can't even tell you how many knitting patterns I tried to do. And then I came across the petite knit and guess what? I am doing it with um, this, this is beautiful. Almost, I don't know, you can see it's just gorgeous. So I bought this on a double down um, I had paused my knit crate because I have too many and then I, um, I bought it on a double down. Um, so this is what it's looking like so far. So, um, yeah, again, the round collar. So I am uh, about a couple of inches away from splitting for the underarm, but, um, I just, I think it's going to make a really nice, it's so soft and has the linen. It has the um the silk in it so it it's just beautiful and i love this color so when my uh, granddaughter saw it she's like what are you making are you making something for me i'm like oh no but do you want something in pink and she says yeah i would love something in pink so anyway that's the only thing that i have four of these um and this and, and there's 400 um yards in here because it's fingering um, so, um, this isn't even one, one skein yet. You know, I haven't even used one. I haven't finished one skein. I still have, um, this much in a skein. So I probably get to the underarms before I, I finish the skein. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Cause I have four of them. So that's 1200 yards. I tried the ranunculus again and... I don't know, I just, I, I'm not crazy about that pattern. I know I've done it twice, um, but it's like one size fits all. It gives you, um, you're supposed to make it with fingering or you can make it with whatever you want um, and using size six needles, um, size six millimeter needles. So it comes out very, very lacy and very, I don't know. It, uh, I've done it, but I tried, like I said, I tried a whole bunch of things because I really wanted to use this yarn. And so then I went chasing patterns to figure out what I wanted to do. And this is the one I figured I would use. So um, what else have I been knitting? I will go and put it on. And here we go. So here I am wearing Hohi Locatelli's boxy sweater. I guess it's the boxy um, worsted. Anyway, I will show it to you. I will stand back here a bit. So I did not make it as wide as it called for. I, cause it, it, it actually, cause when you're with the pattern, um, this actually comes to about here and you just have a little sleeve here but I took about five inches of, of ease out of the pattern. And um, funny, I, this is the meandering um, serpentine from, um, from Michael's that I bought. I have still tons of it. And I bought it at different stages, but you can see a theme on my colors, obviously, that I like the purple. But I didn't notice that um, I used from here to here, a different dye lot. And it came out a little darker, but it's kind of cool. It kind of gives it some texture. I didn't, I don't 
switch lines and all that stuff. But anyway, so it, it's, it's long, but I love it. It is so comfortable. I'm definitely going to make another one, probably in fingering weight. Um, I didn't have enough in this pink or I would have made it. Um, so yeah, so that's the, um, the boxy. And like I said, I made a smaller size because I didn't want it as, as wide. Because this isn't fingering, I didn't think it was going to fall properly because the fingering when it's really wide, just kind of, I'll show you a picture of hers. Um, you'll see that in hers, the worsted boxy, see, because it's fingering, it falls really nicely. Um, and see where the sleeves are. When she, she puts her arms out, it goes all the way. Um, oh, here you go. Have some of these pictures. See how see how wide it is. So I, I had enough yarn. I just I don't know. I didn't think it was gonna fall well in this in this. This is uh, acrylic and nylon, but it's uh, actually it actually felt pretty cool, and it has a little bit of. Um, texture up here and you have to reduce it didn't it turned out okay I could have probably done a better job in the reduction here and picking up here um, and then the back has some uh, shorter rows or not short rows but it's not as deep as the front and um, it has this little round collar and a little ribbing and stuff so um yeah really cool I love this because it is um you knit in the round all the way to the, yeah, you knit it in the round to here, and then you split it, and then you finish the front, and then you finish the back. I do believe that's what you do. I can't remember now. I did it. I did it in March and April. Um, I think, or you do the top, the front, and then you do the back, and then you join it, and then you knit as long as you want. One of those ways anyway it's a great pattern it's a paid for pattern but i love um yohi locatelli she, it is such a beautiful sweater so i yeah i want to get some uh, more fingering weight yarn and then and do another one and i have enough of this to make one for my granddaughter probably both granddaughters um because she does I, it does come in a um children's size so that is going to be uh, one of the ones. Oh, here it is. The boxy for kids. So I'll sh show you a picture. Cutie pie. I think this is uh, Yoki's uh, granddaughter. And uh, very, very cute. Yeah, <laughs> so cute. See? A little boxy. How cute. Anyway. So... Yeah, so I've done that, and I also finished another sweater. So here we go. Here I am. So, uh, yeah, you can see that I have a theme today on my sweaters. So I, this is called the tulpe top, which is tulip, I think, in Danish. And here we go. So it, I don't know if you can see, it has a sparkle in it, this yarn, and it has, this, it's done in the round, but it has this little uh, feature here. You can see on the side where you um, do some purl stitches and they have this tulip design. So this one, I know um, you, you, you do the front, the, you do the front and then you do the back. Um, and then you join it in the round and you go all the way around. So there's, and the pattern is really simple. Um, this is a tulip designed by Lisa Hans right here. So not in color. And it has the pattern again at the bottom and a little slit on the side. So you can see here. Yeah, so you split it here a little bit and then uh, you do one row of tulips at the bottom. So um, I really love this, um, except I, I will do it again, except, um, and I did it op a little more open than it asked to do. I think it was, yeah, I, I'm not crazy about boat necks, but I think this turned out pretty good because I left it a little bit more open. So when I was looking for yarn, 
uh, and the project, I came across uh, in my stash this Patton's Glam Stripe, which I bought at um, the, oh my God, Burnett, oh no, I can't remember now what it's called, but I'll, I'll put it here, down here. So I'll show you, I have, I bought it, I have another 12 of these in different colors. So I have it in this color, which is not a great color. And then I have it in a brighter orange color. And this yarn is, uh, this one's called Rose Dawn, but this one is called Orchid. This is, I had a ball left. So of the six, um, oh my gosh, what's the store called? You have to, I went in person, but you can order online. Anyway, so Glam Stripe, 60, 60 grams. It's 85% acrylic and 15% polyester. There's 261 yards in this. Um, it is the warehouse sale. The warehouse sale, that's it. Um, it is not the, I think it's because of the, the nylon in it or the, what's it called? The, um, oh my God, the, the polyester that makes it sparkle. It's not the most, it's not the softest yarn, but it did turn out kind of cute. So, um, and I did use six balls of my stash. Well, five anyway, because I had one left. So that was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so the tulip pattern, um, I, I don't know where I picked it up, I guess on Ravelry. It is a paid for pattern, um, but really simple to make. And I think it, I, like I said, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, yeah, I think I made the uh, extra large and I followed the, the um, there's a, a chart and I followed the chart and it was really super simple. So um, it was, it was great. So another really cool pattern that you can make, but I think, yeah, I'll make it again, but with nicer yarn that's softer because this yarn is kind of, I don't know that, I mean, today's a hot day and I don't know that I could wear it all day because it's kind of, kind of itchy and it doesn't fall as nice as some of the other yarns like it it's okay um and it's kind of interesting how the the sparkle you can see the sparkle came out like stripes which is kind of interesting but um very super simple and yeah so you have to do this piece the back and then you join and you do it all in the round until you split here so that is another sweater I completed and I've done another one. I know I, I've, well, I haven't broadcast since I guess end of March. So that's April, May, so almost two months. So I've done quite a bit. Um, oh, and I have a blanket I finished too. So before I change to show you my last sweater whip, um, which is not in pink or purple, <laughs> I know, right? Um, I'm going to show you the blanket I made. Now, you'll remember from my last podcast that I had bought black and white um, Bernap blanket yarn because my girlfriend's daughter um, had a baby boy and they're doing the uh, room in black and white. So I'm, I'm not going to take it out of here, but you can see it's it's a fair size. I used more white than black because the black are slip stitches. And so this particular pattern um, is a knit pattern. And I think I told most of you guys that I like to um, use Bernat blanket knitting. I don't, I'm not crazy about crocheting Bernat blanket because it's really thick. So... Um, this is called the Sarasota Chunky Slip Stitch. And I do believe I used a size nine or 10 uh, knitting needles. Um, cast on 89 stitches and I had a border of five. And, um, okay, maybe I will take it out and show you. So I gotta, I gotta mail it to her because we are, in lockdown again here in Toronto, in Ontario. 
a real pain in the ass, especially when you see people in the States, you know, going to movies again and going to bars and all that stuff. And here we can't even leave our house, which is a real annoying thing, but we are not like I've only, I've had my first shot. Nono's had his first shot and my second shot's not till August. And so very few people have had their second shots in Ontario anyway. So, um, yeah, so here it is. You can see, oh yeah, you can, couldn't see Steve, how the, I did, um, I just carried the yarn one um, row, so I didn't have any ends. So it's really cute. This was supposed to be with worsted weight, and obviously uh, Bernat Blanket is um, chunky or bulky, um, but it turned out really cute. I've washed it, and I mean, you can block it. It doesn't really the blocking doesn't do anything because it's polyester but um yeah so it turned out really cute so that is item number three that i completed and i have one more sweater that i will show you and here it is so i decided not to put it on <laughs> because i supposed to block it and I haven't had a laundry room for a while and they just finished the laundry room and I haven't got around to blocking it but the yarn I used is from Knit Crate so um, I know Rose Likes Crochet is doing a Knit Crate challenge where you're supposed to use your Knit Crate so I've already um, I've been doing that with my work in progress here because that's a Knit Crate um, and I've used the Euro Sugared Sports, it's a 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 10% stellina. It is a sport weight at 300 yards per skein. Now, again, I bought this in Double Down. I bought it in this color, which, surprise, surprise, I bought it in a gray with the stellina. And I bought it with a orange. So that's, so this pattern, and like I said, I haven't had a chance to block it, but again, I love the textured lacy yoke, um, short sleeves. Um, and actually this pattern wasn't as difficult as I thought it might be. Um, so the pattern's called Etude. Again, I found it on Ravelry. I think it's a paid for pattern. Um, I use, this isn't fingering weight. I do, this is sport weight. So I made a smaller size that I would normally make. Um, and it has, um, if there's no graph, oh, there is a graph, sorry. There's the graph. I won't show it all, but Yep, so it's 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 very easy to follow. Um, I ended up, sorry, doing this one. I ended up doing about this much three times because um, I wasn't doing it properly. So now this has a sparkle. I don't know if you can see the sparkle in it at all. Maybe a little bit there. Um, it has uh, some short rows at the back. So this is a little bit, you see, wider than this at the front. Um, now I haven't sewn in the end because I'm waiting to block it to see if um, it actually stretches um, after I block it and becomes a little longer. And if it doesn't, then I will, I have more of this orange to, um, to lengthen it if I have to. But I think this one turned out beautiful. It's a beautiful color. And um, like I said, I have, I love the sparkles, obviously. <laughs> I bought a lot of sparkles. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I had copied, I printed this pattern a while ago and I just found it in my, in my pattern stash. And I thought, oh, that's kind of neat. And so I just thought I'd try it. And um, yeah, it, uh, it turned out really nice, I think. So again, more Knit Crate that I've used. Oh, you see the sparkle? 
but it turned, I think it turned out really nice. And I think I'll show it again. I'll wear it in my next podcast when I, after I block it, because I think this will really open up really nice. So like I said, I've been a busy girl. So that is three sweaters, a blanket, and I started a crochet project, but I took it all apart which you know I do, those of you that know me, if I don't like it and it's just not turning around, I, I won't even bother keeping it. So um, I'll show you the pattern that I, I found, I saw the pattern on um, Chevy Rel and um, she is, she's in the middle of making it and I thought, well, that's kind of cool. I've never done mosaic type of, um, crocheting and so I went through my stash let me find the pattern for you so that you can see what I am talking about first I thought it was so organized so the mosaic gunez is the pattern by um hmm I don't oh I don't know who it well mosaic goons top doesn't say who it's by Anyway, so here it is, and you can see it's um, it's got mosaic at the bottom and has a, a deep back. So it needs three different colors, but I was going to do it in two colors um, where I was going to do the white in here in, a, in the same color as the body. But anyway, I went through my stash and I couldn't find any fingering. I couldn't find three different colors of fingering yarn. And um, this is, yeah, this is used as fingering. And then when I tried to do it in a different type of yarn, it just wasn't turning out. So I've, I'm gonna try to find, um, I'm gonna try to order some fingering weight yarn that I can, uh, I can make this top. Um, because it looks, it almost looks knit. That's how fine it is, but it's actually crocheted, so. It's really, really, really pretty. So I think that'll be my next crochet project. Now, in my attempt to find fingering weight yarn, that's where I ended up looking, finding this, but I couldn't find any contrast in my in my stash. So I would have used this. This would have actually been pretty in that. But um, and then I found some ice yarns that I bought a long time ago. Um, and these two colors and I thought okay well I'll use these but these are lace weight they're not even fingering weight and crocheting with them oh my god was awful like oh I won't even open it up but it's anyway so I have I think I have two more of these so then I thought well I'll double it and make something else and it is um kind of like a boucle yarn it is really hard to crochet with. I'll show you. So, so here it is. I think I doubled it here. But, and it doesn't even, I think it comes out to DK doubles. It's not even worsted. Like, look how thin it is. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with this yarn. Because I may have to, even knitting with it is kind of, you know, and this yarn is actually, it's a nice yarn, and I think it is acrylic and polyamide. So it's not even, there's no wool or anything in it. So that's gonna probably have to go back into my stash, because I took whatever I was making apart. Um, so yeah, so I don't have a lot of, I don't have any crochet. I didn't do any crocheting, I did all knitting in the last um, month. For six weeks so what else do I have I did buy some yarn now I said I wasn't gonna buy yarn and I said I wasn't gonna buy any more knit crate yarn because um, I have a lot as you and I will put in my knit crate stash video at the end so you can take a look at it so um, but I went, I, there was a double down and there was, so take a look at my knit crate. If you don't know what knit crate is, it's a subscription box, but they now send it into a bag. 
and um, I was gonna cancel it, but I had a, about $50 coupon to use that I had never used. And in this Knit Crate, it allowed you to use it and get the, 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 the deal anyway. So I have a Knit Crate box coming from April that hasn't arrived yet and we're in May. And I also have another yarn stash that I bought. Um, and then I bought this. I know. So I want to make a sweater. This is for winter, so it's going to have to sit for a bit. But this is so beautiful. And it's not pink or purple, people. <laughs> so I got, it's the Vidalana Celestial. And it was a deal to get five. So I have five of this. So this is uh, Vidalana Celestial, which is a Aran weight. It's 150 yards, 90% alpaca, and 10% tensile. And it is so soft and not scratchy at all. I mean, it is beautiful. And then I got it in this other blue, which is called um, Titan. This one is called Ganymede. And I got five of these. So you can see. And this one is called Callisto. So it's all the same yarn and I got five of each. So I'm definitely going to do some color work here. I think this will be beautiful. The color work on a like a really nice or maybe even a stripe. I don't know. But yeah, so I have 15 of these. So I can make myself a sweater, the kids, I don't know who else, but it's a beautiful, beautiful color. So yeah, so that's all I got. And I ordered this way after my, I think my April box left. Knit crate, still don't have it. So I did purchase yarn and I will have some other yarn to show you next time because um, it should be coming. Now I did wanna let you guys know that I do have a new PO box number. Don't send me anything, I don't need anything, but if you wanna send a card or something, that's wonderful. The price of shipping is ridiculous. Um, so I, I, it is, yeah, crazy time. So don't, don't send anything, but not that, you know, I don't need anything, but um, I do get some lovely cards from, uh, you lovely viewers every once in a while. And um, yeah, so I do have a new PO box number and I will have that down below. And I will link also all these patterns um, that I've used. Um, and um, I think that is it for me. So um, yes, yeah, so thank you for coming by. Oh, I did wanna say one more thing. I just, um, there was a video on Fruity Knitting, and I don't know if any of you watch Fruity Knitting, but Andrew Doig died. Um, he passed away, and his wife Andrea and his daughter um, did a beautiful, beautiful um, mem memorial video for him. So it was really nice, yeah. Um, if you wanna see that, it's uh, really beautiful, because they, I guess they were broadcasting since 2016, so five years of broadcasting, they have a lot of viewers, but, um, pretty sad. Um, he was a really integral part of that um, program and um, and just from his memorial sounds like a wonderful person. So rest in peace, Andrew. And uh, my condolences to the family as well. So, so thanks for coming by everyone and I uh, hope I don't stay away um, as long as I have. Um, I'll try to come back maybe in two weeks to see what I have done and I hope to have more crocheting for you. Um, and um, so thanks for dropping by. See you soon, bye-bye.